So far in this section, we have learned how to send different types of HTTP requests to the server. Now, while sending an HTTP request to the server, we can also send some additional data to the server with the request. And that we can do by setting request headers, which can be passed on the server. So in this lecture, let's learn what are the different ways in which we can set request headers when working with HTTP client object. If you remember, when we were sending the post request to the server in order to create a task, there we are also sending some headers. Now, in order to send the header, what we do is to this post method, we are specifying a third parameter. So the first parameter will be the link to which we want to send the HTTP request. The second parameter will be the body which we want to send with the post request. And the third parameter will be an anonymous object. And in that anonymous object, we can set this headers property and to that we can assign some headers. Now here, how are we creating these headers? We are creating these headers by calling the constructor of HTTP headers class. And to that we are passing an object and in that object we are specifying some properties. So here the property name is my header and for that the value is hello world. So this my header will be created as a request header and for that header the value will be hello world. If we want to assign more headers we can simply use a comma and we can specify another headers. So this is one way of creating a header but this is not the only way of creating a header. So let me show you other ways in which you can create a header. So let's scroll down and let's go to get all tasks method where we are sending a get request to the server to get all the tasks. Now here what I want is with the request, I also want to set some request headers. So for that, to this get method, first we are passing the URL to which we want to send the request. We want to send the get request. And the second parameter here, it will be the anonymous object. And in that object, we can specify headers property. And to this headers property, we can assign some headers. Now, before we assign any header here, we need to create that header. And we already know that in order to create a header, we create an instance of HTTP headers class. So here, in order to create an instance of HTTP headers class, we can say, new HTTP headers and let's go ahead and let's assign that instance to a variable. Let's call it headers. Okay. Now here to this headers constructor, we are not passing any object in order to set headers. Instead, what we are going to do is on this headers instance, we are going to call a method and that method is set method and using this set method we can set some http request headers and to do that to this set method we need to pass two parameters the first parameter will be the key the header name so let's say here i want to set the header content type and i want to set it to application slash json so to this set method, we need to pass two parameters. The first parameter will be the header name and the second parameter will be the header value. And a very important point which you need to remember here is that the instance of this HTTP headers, it is immutable. It cannot be changed. So here on this instance, when we are calling this set method in order to set this content type header, since this instance is immutable, this set method, it will return a new instance. Okay, it cannot modify this headers instance because it is immutable. So this set method, it is going to return a new instance. And in that instance, this content type will be set to application slash JSON. So let's go back and let's assign that new instance to this headers property itself, this headers variable itself. And since we are doing the assignment here, here we cannot use const keywords. Let's use let keyword here. Okay. Now, if you want to set more headers, all you have to do is again on this headers instance. Again, you can call set method and to this set method, you can specify the header name. Let's say here I want to set access control allow origin. 
and I want to set it to all. For that, I can specify an asterisk here. So I also want to set this header on the request. So again, on this instance, we are calling the set method. Since the instance of HTTP headers is immutable, this set method it is going to return a new instance. So let's go back and let's assign that new instance again to this headers variable. And in the same way, if you want to set more headers, you can do it like this by calling the set method and assigning it back to this headers variable. So here I only want to set two headers. So this last headers instance, it is going to store that header and we are going to assign it to this headers property of this anonymous object. Okay, with this, if I save the changes and if we go to our application here, let's open developer console. Let's go to network tab. Let's refresh the page. Let's clear everything here. And now let's click on this fetch task button. So when we click on this fetch task button, it is going to get all the tasks from the database. And here you can see it has sent two requests. The first request, it will be of type options. So we don't need to worry about that. The second request is the actual get request, as you can see. And here, if we check the request headers, so let me move this developer control a little bit up. So here, if you see this access control allow origin header is set on the request and it is set to all. That's what we specified in our code. We wanted to set this access control allow origin to all. And then the content type is also set to application slash JSON. So in this way, from our Angular code, we can set some request headers. And for that, we can use this set method. And we also have another method called append in order to set the request headers. For example, instead of set here, we can also use append method and it will work in the same way. So if you save the changes, if we go to our application, let's clear all these requests from here. Let's click on this fetch task button and let's open this request here. If you see the request headers there, we still have access control allow origin set to all and content type set to applications less JSON. So we can also use append method to specify request headers. Now the question is, what is the difference between set method and append method? Let's try to understand that. So here let's go back and let's use set method. Okay. And here using this set method, we are setting the content type to applications less JSON and the set method it is going to return us a new instance on that new instance. Again, we are calling this set method and here also let's try to set this content type. And here let's try to set the content type to text slash HTML. Okay. Now let's save the changes. Let's go back to our application. Let's clear all these requests. Let's click on this fetch task button and let's open this new request. And here you will notice that the content type is set to text less HTML. In the code, first we tried to set it to application slash JSON and then we are trying to set it to text less HTML. So keep in mind that when we use this set method, the set method returns a new instance after modifying the header. Okay. And if the header already exists, and if we try to set same header using set method, that existing header value will be replaced with the new value in the new instance, which we set. So for example, here, when we are using this set method to set this content type, this set method is going to return us a new instance. And in that new instance, this content type will be set to applications less JSON. Now on that new instance, again, we are calling this set method. And there we are again trying to set this content type header itself. So what it will do is it will replace the previous value of the content type with the new value and it will return a new instance. So in that new instance, the content type is set to textless HTML. It has replaced its previous value. And that's why here we are seeing the content type as textless HTML. Now with append, what happens is instead of replacing the previous value, 
it appends a new value to the previous value. So here instead of set, let's use append and let's see the behavior. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to our application. Let's clear everything here and let's click on this fetch task button. And let's now look into this request header. So here you will see that now the content type is application slash JSON comma text slash HTML. So the append method has appended the new value for content type header after its previous value. It has not replaced it. It simply appended that new value. And that is the difference between set method and append method. So in this lecture, we learned how to create headers and how to pass them with the request. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.